Hello, and in today's 5 Minute Friday, I want to discuss some advanced mapping features. Dronelink has a good mapping video that gets you started, and I will link to that below. So I'm not going to cover here how to set up a map, but um, we're going to go into some features covering the speed of the flight and how Dronelink automatically adjusts to make sure that you always capture at an appropriate speed, that you always get the overlaps that you need. And also we'll, we'll touch on a thing called ground sampling distance and target distance. So we're going to start with speed. Um, I've got this map here and it's of a school that we did a thermal capture at a while back. And by default, I've set this mission up to have a speed of 20 mile per hour. And by default, the settings are for a Mini 3 Pro at 285 feet. And if I run a simulation, what you're going to find is if I scroll down, you'll see that under the speed, horizontal speed, it's 18 mile per hour. It's maxing out at, which is, which is pretty good. And that's going to be based on this overlap. So we've got a front overlap and a side overlap. So if I change the front overlap to say we need more overlap, and I change that to, let's say, 90, um, and we run a simulation again, what you're going to find is that the speed doesn't reach 18 mile per hour anymore. It reaches 18 mile per hour on its way to the start. And after that, it slows down to just 8.9 mile per hour approximately. Um, and that's because it knows that to give you the overlap that you need, it needs all these extra shots. So let's just put this back to 75. Right. And when you run the simulation, you can see where these uh, where these dots show up if you have that toggled on. You can change here toggle capture markers. If you to if you toggle that on, you can see there's a red dot where each of the photos will be taken. And obviously, if you're flying fast and your capture speed is set at say two seconds, which is the default, um, it's not going to be able to capture enough photos if you're flying too quickly, which is why it slows it down. And that happens automatically. So first off, just be aware that the speed of your capture, the, the speed of your flight is going to be automatically adjusted based on the overlaps that you've set. Now, if I go down and I change some of the other features and the feature that I'm looking at is not actually showing here. So I need to go up here, click on this and change the mission planner mode into expert. And it will give me a warning, but now I get some additional options. By default, the capture is set to distance. And that means that as the drone flies, drone link will send it a command to capture a photo. There are occasionally problems with distance. Doesn't happen very often, but there are situations, particularly where you have a poor signal um, or signal interference where you can end up with gaps. So some people prefer to switch over to time. And if you change the time, right, and you've got this down here, minimum capture interval. Now what's going to happen is at the start of the mission, it's going to send a command to say capture photos every two seconds. And that will happen regardless of whether or not the signal is poor. So that's a, a safer thing to do. Um, but I know some people were worried that if they change it to time, that it won't get the, the overlaps captured correctly. Well, no worries. I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm going to, going to run a simulation, right? And we're going to see that, you know, as before, it's 18 mile per hour. But if I change the if I change the overlaps, 90, okay, and we run a simulation again, straight away you'll see down here 8.9 mile per hour. So it's automatically adjusted. Doesn't matter whether you're in time or distance, it's going to automatically adjust. So just be aware that the flight speed is dictated by the overlaps that you define. Let's go back to 75. And the other thing that I want to cover is a thing called ground sampling distance. And if you look underneath here, just underneath where it talks about the overlaps, it says what the ground sampling distance is. And this is currently showing as as 1.22 inches per pixel. And what that literally means is each pixel represents 1.22 inches on the ground. And sometimes clients will ask you for a specific 
ground sampling distance. So just be aware, you can't set the ground sampling distance, but you can know what it is by just looking here. And if we change this camera, so I'm going to change this to a, a thermal, which is what we were using. You'll see here the ground sampling distance has increased significantly. It's gone up to 4.51. Now, I know that in our case, that isn't quite what we want. So we've got two things we can do to adjust. First, if you want to improve your ground sampling distance, bring the altitude down. So if I bring this down to 3. Uh, to 200, we get 3.16. Now the other thing, and this only shows in the advanced section, if you're in, uh, if you're in uh, expert mode, is if I scroll down here, we've got this thing called target distance. And by default, target distance is set to the same as your altitude. But I know this building is about 75 feet high. And we're interested in the roof, not the ground. So realistically, my target distance is 125 feet. So 200 minus 75 is 125, right? If my math is correct. So what I really want to do here is I want to tell it that even though I'm flying at 200 feet, my target distance is 175, uh, sorry, 125. And that, if I change that, what you're going to find is the ground sampling distance has now changed again. It's gone down to 1.98. And what you'll also find is that the pattern has changed. It's actually increased the number of lines because it knows that to get the overlap that we need of 75% front and 70% side um, with, a, with a target distance of 125, um, it, it needs this many, this many rows. It's very similar to if I, if I change this, if I get rid of the target distance and just set this to 125, you'll see you'll get the same pattern. But all it's doing is it's just adjusting it to say, I'm at 200 feet, but my target distance is, is 125 feet. And that's a way for you to set your altitude, but figure out that you know, you're, you're taking photos of a high roof or something like that, and you want to set your overlaps appropriately. And you could calculate it all manually, but why would you do that when DroneLink does such a nice job of it? And again, you know, if we run this, so we've got our target distance set at 125. If we run this, you're going to find it's going to fly fairly slowly. I scroll down here. Right, look at this, it's only flying 4.5 mile per hour. Um, and it's 4.5 mile per hour because um, the overlaps are so big. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I know that some people found that a little confusing, so I wanted to put a quick video together. I uh, hope you found that useful, and I will see you in the next video.